G'day there, welcome back to another day in paradise here in Melbourne where the weather is really turning it on for winter. Anyway, so a few episodes ago we threw the canopy on the back of the MK which you can see behind me here. Now the major issue of throwing that canopy on is that I'll try and get in the shot here, is that between the headboard here and the cab is there's a rear window. Now before we put the canopy on I could see perfectly at that rear window reversing up to stuff but now because we've got this big aluminium box in the way we can't see jack out the rear window. So in this episode, we're gonna be installing a reverse camera that I picked up from Super Cheap on Special. Uh, it is a Gator reverse cam with the touch screen and it's basically a bolt on over the top of the existing rear mirror. So we'll run the opener and we'll jump straight into it all. So here's our reverse camera that we're going to be setting up today. So we'll open it up and we'll have a look what we get inside. So it looks like everything so far. So we've got the manual plus the bands for the rear view mirror. All our wiring kit for the camera itself is in that one. That looks like our cigarette plug but we're going to hardwire it in so it's always got power. Um, and here's our mirror unit. So apparently it's a nine inch touchscreen unit, which is cool because you can cycle through different functions. Another function on this one is that it's got an SD card function, so you can use it as a reverse dash cam or reverse storage cam too. So in the event someone hits me up the bum in the vehicle, we've got it stored on this unit, so you can take it on the SD card and give it to insurance if we have to get a claim or get something fixed. So that's pretty handy and that's the main reason I've got this one too. Um, and obviously now the other main reason is we got this because we now have the canopy on the back of the vehicle that the rear window there, you can see, I'm on the mess, is that the canopy blocks the window. So if you look at the rear view mirror in the car, all you see is the canopy wall. So we're gonna mount reverse camera camera probably up under here somewhere or even it's on top of the hitch receiver just there so when we back up we can see what we're doing so first job is I reckon we'll throw this in because it's going to be the easiest thing to put in so we've got our bands and the idea is that it sits on the existing reverse review mirror and the bands wrap around it and they clamp it to the existing mirror. So, we'll open up this packet and we'll get onto that first. All right, so we got the actual monitor in. So that's pretty easy. Um, as you can tell, it just sort of clamps in behind. You can see it just there. This is a rubber band, pretty much it wraps around it and then clips in the bottom there and then there's a clip on the top there. So that's a pretty easy install. Um, if I can do it, anyone can do it. So now we've got that installed, we'll go and mount the actual camera um, and then we'll run the wires up the chassis rail from the camera, but we'll have a look at the mounting options because I'm not too sure if I saw a mounting point with the actual camera like screw holes or something. So I'll have a look and then we'll install it. So I've just opened up the bag with the camera in it and it's got the mount on the actual camera ready. So we can just literally tech screw it up onto the bottom of the tray or onto the tow bar. We also got these sticky pad, double side tape and some screws there. But it's nice and flush. So we might even be able to make up a little bracket or something so it can sit under there. Or we'll just pop it up the back there so it's out the way. The last thing I want to do is to reverse into something and have the camera hit if it's sticking out that far. So I think we might even be able to mount it like there and then wrap it all the way around. Maybe? I don't know. Um, 
I was sort of just playing with it before. I'm not really too keen on it sitting like that now. It just seems exposed. And I know the car came with one and it had it sitting there and the wires ran under it and it just rubbed from time and grit and road muck hitting it all the time. So I think I want to keep it out of the way and I'm thinking maybe under the tray there. But also too, the benefit of having it here is that when I've got to tow something, I can see the tow wall and I can see the hitch. So maybe I'm just gonna have to suck it up and then put it there and we'll just run the wires up along the top and then into the chassis rail just there. I think that might be the go. I think that might be the go. So we'll do that. We'll um, stick it there. So then that way we can see the hitch if I'm towing something and we'll run it into the chassis. And we'll run all the way along and will probably pop back out maybe through the firewall somewhere and pop it running along there back into the unit which it looks like it's got a lot of leads so it could work really well so we'll unwrap it and we'll get stuck into running the wiring so we've got the camera stuck down with the supply double side tape and it feels pretty bloody sturdy on there already so i have gone for here and that's due to the tow hitch i can not that i can see myself towing in the near future because i've got the canopy and i don't really have a need to tow a trailer or a camper van behind but the option is there and plus i do have the dirt bike too and i just totally remember that that when i put the bike carrier on the back here i can see what's going on from the back too so i think that's going to be our best option um, and it's 110 degrees or something, so it's going to be able to see the back of the tray here too. So when we're backing up, and instead of trying to touch park everywhere I go, I can now see where I'm backing the tray into, because there's a great big aluminium box in the way from seeing out the rear view. So now that's in there, we'll get rid of this wiring from the old camera that I just sort of tucked there and never really did anything about it, so we'll undo that. And then we'll run this along the top here and then we'll run it along the chassis rail. Now, it's gonna be a bit hard to film doing that. I might just sort of film bits and pieces. I don't know how to do it. Maybe I might have to go down and get a head strap and we can do a bit of a point of view filming. That'd be cool. But I also did find is that they now do, GoPro do a dog harness. So I think it might be pretty cool if we pick up a dog harness and we can have an Ember's point of view episode. Let me know what you think if we should do an Ember episode. Leave in the comments. Just like, I don't know, comment yes or no. I don't know. We'll leave a comment and we might get a dog harness and we can do a point of view episode for Ember. I mean, mind you, it's not going to be a whole lot of content. Just be here running around barking and then looking at me, which you do anyway. So but it might be cool from a dog's perspective. Anyway, we'll get under the car. We'll start filming, running the cabling, get a whole bunch of cable ties stick it all up to the chassis and then we'll probably tidy it back into the firewall so we'll start cracking onto that job then all right so just gotten back from going down to the shops picked up some five core wire it's cheaper to buy five core and then just cut what i need out of it than it is to buy individual coils of wire so if you're tight ass like me that's a good little hack um cable ties and then some conduit because we'll run the reverse camera cable, which is just down here at my feet. We'll run that in with the same wiring as the reverse lights here, because they still need to be wired up. So they can all be running the same conduit together to the cab, which will tidy it up nicely. So we'll measure up the five core wire down the side of the car and cut that and then we'll put this wire here into the conduit with the five core but once we cut it we'll strip it so we're going to be using three of them and the other two will just be spare wires so we'll get started with that and then we can keep working on the wiring so i'll just pretty much I normally do just lay it a bit past where I need to because it always gives me a bit extra overhang. 
and then run it to hit the bonnet there because we'll probably put a relay in from the relay back to the switch in the cab so I think the 5 meters is going to be perfect length really because by the time we strip the end here then cut a bit on the back end there because we've got to go from the one light to the other one piggyback it into the actual wiring so we'll run along the conduit up into the engine bay to a relay I think it's going to work out nicely even then because we're only using three core we can still cut some of the other ones and reuse them on the other light to pick it all back in so all right we'll get stuck into doing that now So we got all the conduit done for our reverse camera and also the reverse lights because I never actually wired them up. So we've doubled them into the same conduit. So now we're going to run down the chassis rail. Now I always find it easier to start from where I need to finish and then run it back because I've got to come up into the engine bay. So rather than trying to push up on my own, I'll lift the bonnet and then just drop it straight down and then I can tape the end to the bonnet somewhere and then work my way back so I'll lift the bonnet up and we'll chuck it in and start working So, as you can see on the time lapse, I've pretty much gotten the conduit ran all the way down the vehicle. So there it is here, just sitting on top of the chassis. Um, I've now just found I've got a sticker mount on, which I was just wiping the, the, the muck off my chassis rail, and I've got a packet of these um, cable tie mounts. No other ones. I've got a big chunky one because I've got a big conduit and to take the size of the cable tie as well. So I'm going to stick that just on the top there if I don't drop it where I wipe. And it means that just that last little bit can sit down. It's a bit hard to see because it's getting a bit dark, but it's flapping around a bit there. But we've pretty much got a conduit run to the back of the car. And that's going to give us our camera and then our power to our reverse lights, which will be run into a relay in the engine bay and into a switch in the cab so I can operate it as an independent light which is these ones here and here so I'm going to stick that mount on and then so obviously you can see here we got all the wiring ran from the back end I've just cable tied it all up into a clump up to here because I had to go to work but so now we've got it all here we're going to go and push the microphone port which is here for the camera we're going to push that through the firewall and then start running it up from the firewall up the A pillar and then across the top of the windscreen into the camera just there. So we'll keep moving and we'll hook in. Alright, so we've managed to get, we'll try and show it, it's a bit hard to see, but we've got our camera connector all the way through. So pretty much we're going to pull off the inside of this A pillar here, we're going to run the cabling up through the dash up along the seam here up and then just pop pretty much just to show you, pop straight down and into it 
so it'll be nice and hidden up inside the lining there and around the apula capping just there so we'll go and do that and then we'll see what it looks like all right so it's a bit awkward to film just because of the shape and the space in this cab but what i've basically done is that i've run the cable up and i've tucked it in under the actual roof liner so you can't actually see it until it pops out just above the rear view mirror here which is good hides all that cabling so it's all pushed up into there and pretty much ran it in from behind so i peeled off this a pillar plastic and then ran it up under there too and we had heaps of slack too so i've tucked a little bit more slack up under the roof liner if i ever need to pull some out i can do it at a later date but so net so next we will go and get the power to it which will come from the fuse box under that key panel there and that will pretty much run up along there run under that a pillar here and then back up and across to there now it will probably piggyback we've got a dash cam to go into so that will piggyback the power off that i think so we'll just make it a bit cleaner to have one power cable run up and around rather than two separate ones but we'll see what we can do with that space so we'll go and do that now all right so now we've got the audio and visual cable plugged in to the reverse camera we're now going to do the hardwiring kit so i've gotten my hands on the gator hard wiring kit for their it's a universal one but it's for their dash cams and reverse cameras um so in these kits it comes with a few bits and pieces it comes with uh five at a fuse kits uh, which is just here i've got one in the center console anyway after you taken out but basically what you do is you pull out an existing fuse out of your fuse block plug this one in the old fuse goes into that top gap there and then you basically piggyback power out of that fuse into the thing over here and then it gets plugged into there on that bullet connector. So what gets plugged into the bullet connector is this um, hardwire voltage cutoff switch. So you can see the bullet connector just there. And basically on here, we've got a whole bunch of different voltage selections down the bottom here. I've currently got it set to 12 volts. So you can choose 12 volt or 24 volt. Um, I've got it hooked up to 12.0 volt. Uh, the point of having that cut off is that once the battery reads 12 volts the actual hard wiring kit will kick off and it won't draw power into the reverse camera anymore while the vehicle shut off so there's a safety feature that if you're parked and your car gets impacted or it detects a movement there's like g-shock counters or something in the reverse camera it will actually lock that footage on the camera you can put an sd card in it and so that's that hard wiring kit that allows it to keep pulling power to keep the recording going at all times. So with that one, I chose 12 volt. Um, I've got to check my battery health to see what that's sitting at at the moment. Say if it's sitting at like 12.4, I might just leave it at 12. But if it's registering at like 12 point something, I might leave it too. But we'll see what the battery health is doing anyway. And then what it reads without the alternator kicking on. So it'll just be on stationary. We'll chuck the multimeter on the battery and check it. But we'll do that a bit later. Anyway, so we'll go and chuck this hard wiring kit in and then we'll go and have a look what the camera looks like when it's turned on. All right, so we've got the power all sorted now. So we'll flip the camera around, boom, and you can see it working. So it's all touchscreen. Uh, it does keep flashing the SD card because I've got to put one up the top of it. Anyway, so it's got a whole bunch of different settings. Um, obviously got microphone. That button just there is the camera reverse so when i installed it i must have installed it upside down anyway so when it turns on the camera's always upside down so up is down down is up anyway so you hit that gyro rotate and then the camera writes itself uh settings button it's quite like soft and sensitive i must be doing something wrong anyway But yeah, so that's the whole camera, which is pretty bloody cool. Uh, I've got to get the right time and date going up there, but everything else is really sweet. So that's pretty much the camera all sorted. So now we can actually see out the back, which is bloody brilliant, because it was a pain in the ass trying to reverse up to everything and I couldn't see Jack out the 
rear window because of the big box that's now behind me, which you can see back there somewhere. I'll try and show it. There you go, back there. So now we can see out the back window, which is bloody brilliant and a lot safer too. Anyway, so that's all done. So now that the camera's all done, I finally finished off with the reverse lights. Now it's a bit loose and I'll go clean it all up, but I'll do that a bit later. We've got the relay in here for the reverse lights at the back of the car. So basically for that, we've just got a lead off the positive. It's got a 25 amp inline fuse in it at the moment, which goes into the relay for the positive power, which is just green, just there. You've got the switch white wire, red for the lights and brown's earth which earth just around the corner here just see it all earthed now for the wiring for the switch the white is the accessory line off the switch housing and we've got this blue line just here which is tapped in using a t onto the green that runs our battery power straight into the back of the switch which means the switch lights up when i activate the lights and then that earth comes back through into there too so we got it all working which is awesome so now we got bright lights when we reverse we can switch them on and off when needed to so as well which is handy because sometimes i don't need to have that whole light going on so we can switch it off and just have the standard car reverse lights rather than have the full uh I don't know, additional lights plus the reverse lights. so we can flip between which is handy anyway that's all done all right, so that's going to wrap up this episode here. Now, last episode, I had announced that I had some upcoming news and I can finally release that we have our own channel merchandise. So we've got hoodies, we've got t-shirts, and we've got stickers. Now, the hoodies, which is the one I'm wearing, and the t-shirt have the exact same design. So it's got the dirt and dinter on the front and it's got the logo all over the back, which is pretty bloody cool. The tire looks awesome. Anyway. To get your hands on the merchandise, jump on over to my Instagram, follow the links in the link tree. Now you'll notice there's a few links. There's online store, the YouTube channel, the mullets for mental health, and the 2022 Melbourne firefighter stair climb. So if you don't want to purchase anything from the online store, make sure you jump onto those donations and then donate a little bit of money. It all goes to a good cause, all for mental health, which we're all about on this channel. Anyway. The other way you can jump onto that online store is you go into your browser, type in dirtdins.com.au. That's another way to get there. Or if you don't want to do that, you can just roll down on this episode and it will be in the description. So that's the exciting news. We're all pretty excited here at the channel and we can't wait to see it grow and grow and grow and see people rep our merchandise. If you rep our merchandise, put a comment and post it on and we'll make sure we throw you up so you can feature on our channel. Anyway, enough about the online store. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna see more, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button to the channel. It really helps us out and we'll see you in the next episode. Catch ya.